Just a few weeks after the Kenyan government signed an agreement with the Somali government to repatriate over one million Somali refugees, Jubaland leader Sheikh Ahmed Modobe is in the country for talks with the refugees on the importance of going back home to rebuild the country. Even for me, I was like to visit in refugee camps to tell the community and the refugees to how they go back voluntarily in their country. Speaking to Citizen TV, Sheikh Madobe said the government of Kenya has played a big role in reinforcing peace and stability in the war-torn horn of Africa country that has been in the hands of militia groups for more than two decades. Madobe, however, insists that the repatriation should be done on a voluntary basis and no one should be forced to go back. Ireland, we are very happy to coming back. You know, we, need, we don't want to push in or to make the force to go back. Just we need even themselves to come and they say we need voluntary to. According to Madobe, majority of those who are living at the refugee camps come from southern Somalia, which forms the lower Juba. The refugee, I think 80% they are coming from Juba land. Any refugee has the right to choose whether to go home after they have been given information about conditions at their country of origin so that they can make informed decision. Perhaps the reason why the leader is here to have a talk with the refugees on the state of affairs on the ground back home. But even as this goes on, Madobe is calling on UNHCR and the government of Kenya to help in improving the current conditions in Somalia. To establish and to prepare the first before they leaving, suppose the school is uh, water, lighting, something like that, and how they settle their life, how they live. The lower Juba, under the leadership of Sheikh Madobe, has been entertaining the thought of seceding from the federal government of Somalia, an issue that is said to be supported by the Kenyan government. According to security experts, this will act as a security buffer, which will help in concerns blamed on infiltration of suspected terrorists and their sympathizers through the porous borders. At the same time, the leadership of Lower Juba is calling on the UN to lift a ban on the selling of charcoal from Kismayu, arguing that there is an immense stockpile of charcoal of over 6 million bags. The UN Security Council banned the export of charcoal from Somalia in February 2012 to help squeeze Al-Shabaab's finances. But even as all this is happening, Kenyans are keenly watching on how the repatriation will be done as security and terrorism threats continue to be a thorn in the nation's flesh. Michael Njenga, Citizen TV, Nairobi.